The story takes place in a medieval fantasy world, where the ancient devil king is the strongest being on the continent. All of his knowledge has been passed down in a book that has been scattered throughout the world, known as the Book of Nine Secrets. By practicing the teachings of this book, people can reach the world of both heaven and earth. Currently, the book is in the hands of the magic emperor Zhu Yifen. When news of this leaks out, martial arts experts from all over target Yifen because of the book he possesses. In the middle of this, Yifen's servant, Zhao Cheng, rushes to him with the news that the mountain troop has been infiltrated and all its members have been herded. Cheng says that he is worried that the seven emperors will arrive soon. Yifen assures Cheng not to panic as even the seven emperors are no match for his strength. Curious about how his troops were defeated, Yifen goes out to confront the attackers. He sees an army led by a soldier who demands the magic emperor to surrender the Book of Nine Secrets. Yifen smiles, saying that a bunch of insects dare to fight him. He confidently floats in the air, ready for their attack. The soldiers couldn't do anything as Yifen swiftly eliminated them all. Suddenly, a voice comes from above, declaring that they will never let Yifen escape. Yifen and Chang rise into the air only to face the seven emperors. One of them, recognized by Yifen as the Emperor of Swords, demands the Book of Nine Secrets, in exchange for sparing his life. Biffin says that his position as the leader of the eight royals is acknowledged by the sanctuary, saying that even united, they are no match for his might. Yifen asks them all why they have to bother looking for death. The Emperor of Sword asks Yifen if he knows his situation, revealing that he is the sanctuary's enemy and that there are people stronger than him within the sanctuary. Another emperor comes, saying that the book is an ancient emperor's relic belonging to the Holy Land. Cheng recognizes this person as the strongest individual from the Holy Land. Yifen, despite being the enemy of the entire Holy Land, vows to destroy them all. Suddenly, he is stabbed in the back. The Emperor of Swords laughs as it is revealed that it was Cheng who betrayed the Magic Emperor. Cheng tells Yifen to surrender, saying that it is now his time to die. Yifen is shocked by this revelation, realizing that Zhao Cheng was the traitor who leaked information about the Book of Nine Secrets and the Mountain Troops. Yefen questions why Cheng would betray him after raising and teaching him since childhood. Cheng justifies his betrayal by accusing Yefen of selfishly keeping the books, stopping Cheng from the opportunity to study it. Yefen asks Cheng if he betrayed him for that kind of reason. Cheng says that regardless of Yefen's opinion of him, escape is impossible. Yefen thinks to himself that despite raising Cheng since his youth, his own anxieties and narrow-mindedness left him with nobody to trust. Yefen laughs and says that he is going to destroy the Book of Nine along with his own body, ensuring that no one else can get it. Everyone realizes that Yifen is trying to self-destruct and they all get away. Yifen self-destructs and his soul falls down and gets inside a lifeless body in the nearby forest. Yifen wakes up in a new body caught off guard by his unexpected rebirth into this form. Just then, a pack of wolves approaches in search of food. They spot Yifen and begin salivating, ready to attack. However, a single glance from Yifen scares them, causing the wolves and nearby birds to flee in fear. At that moment, someone calls out to Yifen, seeking help and using the name of the body's previous owner, Zhu Fan. Yifen realizes that the person must have been the name of the original owner of this body. Sensing the man's power level is in the second layer, Yifen approaches him intending to absorb his power. Placing his hand on the man's face, the man realizes that Yifen is not Xiao Fan and asks who he is. Yifen reveals himself as the magic emperor Zhu Yifen. Employing one of the nine secret techniques, the drain touch, he absorbs the man's life force. By morning, Yifen reflects on the Drain Touch technique, the pinnacle technique of the devil that allows him to extract the souls and strength of others to increase his own power. However, he must work hard to process it to prevent soul rejection. Therefore, he needs to conjure up power before fully absorbing it. Yifen had not expected it would take only one night to absorb this power. Charging up his hand, Yifen throws the energy at a boulder, destroying it with a single strike. Speaking to himself, he vows that the Emperor of Swords and Zhu Chang should wait as he will soon confront them. He declares that once he returns to the Holy Land, it will mark the end for all of them. Yifen travels through the forest, leaping from one branch to another, realizing that his body has regenerated from the initial level to the fifth layer. However, he understands it will take a long time before he can reach the Holy Land. Suddenly, he notices something happening. Pang Tongling, the head guardian of the Lu family, accuses the Sun family of betrayal. Sun Guanjia, a former servant of the Lu family, tells Pang that he had warned him about interfering in current affairs after their many years of working together. The woman interjects saying that Hui Longzheng, the spiritual martial art of the Lu family passed down through generations, will never be surrendered to the Sun family even if they die. Yifen observes that the Lu family is facing trouble due to their encounter with bandits. Suddenly, Yifen gets a feeling. He feels the feeling of a family relationship. 
He tries to leave the scene but suddenly gets an intense pain in his heart. Yifen wonders whether this pain is a result of his training or if this body is unsuitable for cultivation. He sits down and thoroughly examines himself, finding that his heart, meridians, and breathing all seem normal. He struggles to pinpoint the cause of his pain. Suddenly, he has a realization. Whenever he sees Ms. Lu's expression, the pain disappears only to return when he leaves her presence. Yifen understands that this is a manifestation of heart magic. For practitioners, exposure to magic is akin to being cursed. They cannot freely do anything with their hearts, as doing so would result in death. To solve the mystery, Yifen checks the memory of the body's previous owner, Zhu Fan. Zhu Fan was taken in by the Lu family as a young child. Whenever others tried to oppress him, Ms. Lu would always come to his rescue, saying that he was part of their family. Zhu Fan approached Pang Tongling, requesting training to become a guardian. He wanted to become strong in order to protect Ms. Lu and the family. However, during a bandit attack, Zhu Fan died while protecting Ms. Lu. Yifen realizes that when Zhu Fan died, his determination to protect the Lu family and Miss Lu was ingrained in this body. Whenever Yifen fails to fulfill that duty, the heart magic is triggered. He wonders if he will be a slave to someone else for the rest of his life, and says that even hurting would be better. In his anger, Yifen breaks a tree. The noise attracts the attention of the Sun family who ask about the commotion. Miss Lu wonders if someone has come to their aid. Yifen emerges from the forest and questions Miss Lu why she refuses to share the spiritual martial arts with them. He doesn't want her to lose her life, as it would be a great loss for the Lu family. Miss Lu is surprised to see Zhu Fan still alive. Yifen describes it as a great miracle. Sensing that the weakest bandit is in the sixth layer, Yifen notes that Sun Guanjia possesses large Kai, making a fight with his current strength a life or death battle. Pang regards Zhu as foolish, and the child remarks that it's time to punish him. Zhu counters, questioning why they must defend themselves when they are already on the edge. Miss Lu tells Zhu to stop speaking nonsense and leave. Sun Guanjia says that Miss Lu is kind even in this situation as she attempts to save a mere slave. Miss Lu tells Guanjia to let Zhu go, but he says that is impossible. He orders his servant to hurt Zhu first and then eliminate the rest of them until they surrender. The servant agrees and moves to attack Yifen. Aware that the servant is in the seventh layer, Yifen resolves to defeat him. The servant lunges with his sword, but Yifen swiftly strikes his hand, causing him to drop the weapon. Yifen catches the sword and slashes it across the servant's stomach. This shocks everyone. Yifen thinks about his next course of action, realizing that he must protect the lives of Miss Lu and the child. He quickly grabs them and runs away, with Guanjia telling his servants to give chase. Pang commands his guards to stop the bandits and prevent them from chasing Miss Lu. Guanjia is filled with anger, determined to stop Yifen from ruining his grand plan, vowing to crush his bones and witness his death once caught. Miss Lu tells Yifen to release her, saying that she is concerned for the guards and she wants to return. Miss Lu's brother insults Yifen, calling him a dog slave and telling him to let them go. Yifen stops and forcefully drops Miss Lu to the ground. Miss Lu still insists that they must go back and says that she is unwilling to let the Lu family guards sacrifice their lives for them. Yifen tells her that if she wants to leave, then she should go. He questions her ability to defeat the bandits upon returning and warns her that the enemy is actively seeking them out. Yifen says that if she wants death, she should leave. The child scolds Yifen, referring to him as a slave and questioning how he can speak to his master in such a way. The child demands to be released, saying that he and his sister will go back on their own. Yifen challenges the child, asking if he doubts Yifen's ability to kick his butt. The child reacts with outrage, but Yifen smirks and kicks the child. Miss Lu tells Yifen that he has gone too far. Yifen replies that this was just a minor punishment, saying that it is preferable to the child falling into the bandit's hands. Yifen asks if there is a nearby hiding place. Miss Lu mentions several farms but admits there are no secure hiding spots. However, she suggests a foggy forest located on the western side of Black Wind Mountain, where even the bandits might be unfamiliar with the terrain. Upon hearing this, Yifen decides to head there. He instructs Miss Lu to keep her brother in front as they walk. Miss Lu thinks to herself that once she escapes this situation, she will punish Yu Fan. They arrive at the Misty Forest, and Miss Lu informs Yi Fan that the mist has been present for years, making it difficult for people to enter or leave. She reveals that her father had told her the chief of Black Wind Mountain is formidable, not any weaker than him. However, for decades there had been no conflicts between the two sides, so she was unsure why the bandits chose to attack now. Yi Fan chuckles, saying that this place is perfect. Miss Lu suggests that Yifen should go with the young master while she diverts the bandits. Yifen refuses, explaining that he is unfamiliar with the terrain and that if Miss Lu doesn't accompany them, he won't be able to look after the child. He warns her that if she leaves, he will hurt the child immediately. 
The child becomes angry, but Yefen clarifies that if Miss Lu goes, it would be as good as sacrificing herself. He tells her to take care of the life she has saved, emphasizing the value of her own life. Yifen declares that they must destroy Sun Guanja and the bandits here. Miss Lu asks if Yifen is crazy, wondering how he can defeat them on his own. She points out Sun Guanja's large amount of key power and the presence of four other strong individuals. Miss Lu says that even with Pang's assistance, Yifen wouldn't beat her match, asking what he can do in their current situation. Yifen confidently says that those worthless individuals are no match for him. He tells Miss Lu that she can now listen to his opinion or surrender to them. Yifen tells Miss Lu to give him the spiritual stone, saying that the Lu family's hope rests in her hands. He asks her if she's willing to fight. Reluctantly, Miss Lu agrees, handing her ring to Yifen as a family treasure. She warns him that if he betrays her, she won't let him go. Yifen tells her to relax and wait there, then leaves them. The child says that the slave is becoming arrogant and suggests his sister teach him a lesson. Miss Lu reminds the child that despite the slave's lack of respect, he is still helping them, which is better than those who remain silent and useless. She thinks to herself that she doesn't know what Yu Fan is like now because he has changed. Yifen finds himself in the depths of the forest and recognizes the area. He decides to turn it into the second Qian Mountain. Opening the nine remote gates, he uses Miss Lu's ring to activate the spell. Miss Lu and the child see the fog in the forest disappear. Yifen comes and Miss Lu asks what happened if he was the one responsible. Yifen advises her to calm down, assuring her there's no need to worry. He tells Miss Lu to follow him as he teaches her magic shackles and other spells, so that when the bandits arrive, she can control and eliminate them. Miss Lu is surprised by this revelation, questioning if this is the way to defeat their enemies. She realizes that array methods hold more value than techniques and martial arts in this world, and the first level array Yifen casually uses in Mystery of the Zongmen family. She wonders how Zhu Fan, a mere slave, could casually do an array formation. Curious, she asks Yifen how he did it. Yifen instructs her not to worry about the details, saying that he has set the limits and will now teach her. He tells Miss Lu to wait until the bandits meet their end. Returning to Sun Guanja and his gang, they entered the foggy forest and successfully captured Pang. Pang screams at Guanja, telling him to end him immediately or face revenge from those who have perished. Sun Guanja laughs and tells Pang that now that he has taken him hostage, his demands will be fulfilled. Guanja explains that Miss Lu and the others are in hiding and he requires Pang's assistance due to his familiarity with the Misty Forest. Guanja says that because of Miss Lu's kindness, she cannot abandon Pang. Pang tells Guanja that he cannot be used as leverage against Miss Lu. Just then, they notice someone sitting under a tree. It's Yifen. Yifen announces that he has been waiting there for a long time. Guanja tells Yifen that he is brave to stand before him. Guanja commands one of his men to capture and hurt Zhou Fan. The man charges at Yifen with his sword in an attempt to attack him. Before the man can launch his attack, Yifen says that the two individuals have been paralyzed and are now under his control. Sun Guanja hears this and orders his men to stop. He questions Yifen, asking if what he says is true. Yifen proposes a deal to Guanja, suggesting that he will hand over the two captives in exchange for a guarantee of his own life. The reveal shocks everyone present. Guanja demands to know why Yefen betrayed the Lu family, to which Yifen chuckles and counters by asking why Guanja betrayed the Lu family. Yefen says that people cannot continue destroying themselves and emphasizes that with the Lu family's defeat, he cannot rebuild a family with just his own strength. He says that it is common sense to use their lives as bargaining chips for a better life. Yefen grabs a red rope and shows it to Guanja, explaining that the two individuals are hiding at one end of the rope, but there are many twists and turns along its length, and only he can discern the correct path. Yifen gives the red rope to Guanjia, telling him to use it as a signal. Guanjia says that it is a good idea, stating that it will make it easier to track them and find their way back through the forest. Guanjia tells Yifen that he agrees to the deal but warns Yifen that he doesn't trust him at all. They both share a laugh and Guanjia tells Yifen to lead the way. On their way, Pang continues to insult Zhou Fan, calling him a dog slave and accusing him of betraying the young master. Pang says that he trusted Zhou Fan only to be deceived. Even in death, Pang vows to curse them for life. Yifen suddenly stops in his tracks and Guanja questions why he stopped and if they have reached their destination. Yifen tells Guanja that he has led him to Huangquan Road, the place where Guanja will meet his end. Guanja attacks Yifen, but it turns out that Yifen had used an illusion spell, substituting himself for the group of wooden logs. Guanja orders his men to quickly find a way back. They discover that the red rope has been cut and Pang Tongling has also disappeared. Frustrated, Guanja punches the ground, realizing that Yifen had tricked him. He believes that the Misty Forest cannot trap him and vows to end Yifen without fail. Yifen hears this and laughs, saying that Guanja will never have the opportunity to hurt him. 
Suddenly, the fog turns red. Guanja instructs his men to stay alert and keep watch, but when he turns around, he finds that they have all disappeared. Confused, he wonders where they have gone and eventually realizes that it is an array method at play. Meanwhile, with Miss Lu and the others, Miss Lu sits in a seal and informs Yifen that they have been controlled and disappeared one by one, and Pang has been saved. She asks Yifen about their next course of action. Yifen says that his next step is to assist Miss Lu and grabs her hand. Confused, Miss Lu questions his actions, to which Yifen advises her to remain still, follow him, and stay focused. He shows her the seal, and Miss Lu witnesses its extraordinary power. Yifen instructs Miss Lu and the bandits. Suddenly, a group of dark ghosts comes from the sky, attacking the bandits. The bandits die upon contact with the ghosts, gradually dying one by one. Guanja attempts to fight back but meets the same fate. In his final breath, Guanja asks Zhu Fan who exactly he is. Yifen tells Guanja to go to hell and ask the Hell King. Yifen recites the spell. Worldly things return to worldly things and Solo returns to the soil. The ghost Kurt will return to him. As he casts the spell, the spell near Miss Lu disappears and all the ghosts that had attacked the bandits come towards Yifen. Yifen absorbs their power, causing him to rise and reach a spectacular level of strength. Having absorbed the power of all the bandits, he experiences a significant breakthrough. Yifen realizes that now that he has achieved this breakthrough, he needs to practice some martial arts. He reunites with Miss Lu and the others, and Miss Lu asks him where he had been and how the array suddenly lost control. Yifen explains that it happened because the Linchin was too small, causing the array to malfunction and go out of control. He adds that he went to check if Sun Guanja and the others had survived, and he informs them that no one escaped. Pang confronts Yifen kneeling before him and showing remorse for cursing Yifen earlier. He admits that he didn't know Yifen was setting a trap for the bandits. Pang tells Zhu Fan that if he wants to hit or scold him, he can do so and Pang won't do anything. Even if Zhu decides to take his life, Pang will accept it. Yifen is taken aback by Pang's loyalty and thinks that if Zhao Cheng had shown this kind of loyalty, he might not have ended up in their current situation. Yifen tells Pang that he is the head guard of the Lu family, while Zhao is just a servant and as such, he cannot punish Pang. He acknowledges that their victory over the bandits was achieved with Miss Lu's help. Pang turns to Miss Lu, asking if what Yifen said is true, and Miss Lu confirms it. Pang exclaims, God bless Miss Lu and her family, expressing his gratitude. He believes that with Brother Zhu's power and the rise of the Lu family, success is within reach. Yifen asks Miss Lu about their plans now that the immediate threats have been eliminated. Pang reveals that their initial plan was to escort Miss Lu to the city of Feng Kai where the son of the Kai family leader would marry her. Yifen asks if this is the Kai family in Feng City. He wonders that the Kai family is the most prominent family in Feng City, and if they can hand over Miss Lu to them, perhaps the will and the magic of the heart will disappear, granting him his freedom. Yifen suggests that they head to the Kai family, telling everyone to prepare for the journey. Back in a castle, someone seated on a chair asks if Sun Guanja succeeded. His men report to Xiao Zai that Sun Guanja has failed and that the Lu family is now in Feng City. Xiao Zai instructs his men to continue monitoring them, and they acknowledge his order before leaving. Xiao Zai moves behind his chair and behind the curtain, where an old man lies on a bed. Xiao Zai addresses the old man as master and assures him that his old friend is already waiting for him. He vows to send him and his brothers to unite once he possesses the palm of the returning dragon. Xiao Zai laughs menacingly. In Feng City, the Lu family and their companions had arrived. Pang comments that Zhao has likely never been to Feng City before and asks for his impression. Yifen thinks to himself that it is not much different from a small village. He asks Miss Lu if they are going directly to the Kai family. Miss Lu explains that they cannot go there directly, as she and Yunhai will go meet them first and then return to fetch the others later. Pang laughs, saying that they must rely on Miss Lu while Yifen finds it troublesome. Pang adds that if they were to go directly, they would be criticized for being impolite. He suggests going to the inn in front of them to rest. Yifen tells Miss Lu to go ahead while he waits there and explores the city. Yunhai warns Yifen that he is in this city because of his sister and demands Yifen's respect. Otherwise, he will educate him. Yifen kicks Yunhai, leading Miss Lu to question his childish behavior. Yifen argues that Yunhai started it and advises Miss Lu to wait until she calms down. He tells her that if she finds him unsightly, she can simply get rid of him. Yifen walks away as Miss Lu watches him. Pang follows Yifen and questions him about kicking Yunhai, saying that Yunhai is his master. Yifen tells Pang to shut up. As they continue, Yifen notices a person arguing with a shop owner about the authenticity of some jades. The shop owner and the jade master defend the jades, claiming they are pure and obtained through great effort. 
The customer insists that she can discern the fake jades, having seen genuine ones before. The shop owner scoffs at her claim, dismissing her and telling her to leave. Yefen approaches and tells the shop owner that his jades are fake. He claims to have a way to prove their authenticity. The shopkeeper asks Yefen where he comes from and why he claims the jade is fake. He questions how Yefen can prove his authenticity. The shopkeeper attempts to defend himself, arguing that Yefen is speaking nonsense and that his jade is genuine. Yefen suggests testing the jade to determine its authenticity. By this time, a crowd had gathered around the stall. Yefen presents a liquid, sulfur, and sediment readily available in the area. He explains that when the jade is soaked in this liquid, its authenticity can be revealed. The shopkeeper agrees to try it and drops the jade into the liquid. The fake jade loses its color and turns red. The onlookers are surprised by this reveal. Yefen calmly explains that the jade was a clone, which is why it began to fade when soaked in the water. He asks the shopkeeper to admit that the lady was correct. Reluctantly, the shopkeeper agrees and the lady comments that this fake jade is only worth three spiritual stones. At that moment, someone throws stones at the shopkeeper, who turns around and demands to know who did it. He discovers that his previous customers have returned to demand a refund. Fuming with anger, he blames Yifen for his misfortune. The lady approaches Yifen and expresses her gratitude, explaining that she only knew the jade was fake but didn't know how to prove it. Yifen shares that he has been in similar situations before, which is why he knows how to handle them. He asks the lady if she wants to buy the stone, despite its worth of three spiritual stones. The lady declines, saying that she only wanted to reveal the value of jade, and then she leaves. Pang comments that the woman is very strange. Yefen thinks to himself that the woman's discerning eyes are sharp, but fortunately, he has enough experience to handle such situations. Yefen asks Pang to return to the inn and lend him some of his ten spiritual stones as there is something he needs to do. Reluctantly, Pang hands over his spiritual stones to Yifen. Yifen walks into the alleyway and finds the shopkeeper waiting for him. The shopkeeper is surprised that Yifen is also seeking him out and asks if Yifen isn't afraid. Yifen tells the shopkeeper that he's there for business and shows his desire to purchase the jade the shopkeeper was selling earlier for ten spiritual stones. The shopkeeper is taken aback and questions Yifen why he wants to spend ten spiritual stones on something he knows is fake. The lady mentioned it was only worth three spiritual stones. Yifen explains that even though it's fake, it still holds some value and in his hands he can sell it for a higher price. The shopkeeper understands Yifen's intentions and acknowledges that it sounds tempting, but he adds that Yifen doesn't know the losses he caused and says that he won't let Yifen go easily. He says that ten spiritual stones are too little. Yifen asks about the shopkeeper's desired price and the shopkeeper responds that he wants Yifen's life. Suddenly, a group of assassins wielding swords comes, surrounding Yefen from the front and back. Yefen tells the shopkeeper that he sincerely wanted to do business with him. The shopkeeper accuses Yefen of ruining his business and says that Yefen must pay for his actions, claiming that he must die. The assassins move to attack Yefen, but abruptly halt as they see Yefen extracting the souls of the assassins behind him, instantly hurting them. Yefen informs the shopkeeper that he is not qualified to hurt him and that the assassins were simply seeking their own death. The shopkeeper reluctantly hands over the stone to Yifen, who departs from the scene. Back at the inn, Yifen instructs Pang to guard the door and prevent anyone from entering. Pang agrees and Yifen enters the inn. He places the fake jade on the table and begins absorbing it. As he expected, it is no ordinary stone, it is fairy blood. This rare stone has accumulated thousands of types of pure blood and absorbed the refined essence of the sun and moon over thousands of years. Is a precious object for magic cultivators and is exceptionally rare. According to the Book of Nine Secrets, fairy blood can create a bloody baby. When a bloody baby is born, they possess the ability to harm others and cultivate holy blood with practitioners. Even the power of an emperor-level figure wouldn't dare to provoke it. Yefen cuts his skin to let his blood drip onto the stone, contemplating how fortunate he is. At the end, man has fallen and Yefen starts feeling dizzy from continuously pouring his blood onto the fairy blood. He understands that, in order to practice the bloody baby technique, one must infuse fresh blood into it until their spirit aligns with the essence of the fairy blood connecting with its heart. Yifen is losing a significant amount of blood, but he realizes that this is his only chance, and if he gives up now, there won't be another opportunity. Once he has started, he can only press forward. Suddenly, Yifen reaches his limit and blood spews from his mouth. He realizes that continuing further would risk his life. He wonders whether he should give up, as the fairy blood holds no meaning if his soul disappears. Just then, he has a vision of the seven emperors who conspired against him. Anger comes within him as he recalls how they only consider their own advantages. He also remembers his servant who betrayed him. They all wish for his end, but he's still alive. 
Determined, he musters all this strength and continues, claiming his identity as the Magic Emperor and the Demon Emperor. He vows to reclaim what was taken from him, pouring even more of his blood. With immense effort, Yiffen finally succeeds. The fairy blood radiates with energy. He chants the spell Doa Heavenly Demon, causing the stone to shatter, and the energy permeates into Yiffen's being. He realizes that he has finally obtained the essence of the bloody baby. Now the martial arts he will use and develop next have been determined. Yiffen exits the inn and notices Pang sleeping by the door. Pang awakens and asks if Yiffen has finished his business. Yiffen asks if Pang has been guarding the door for ten days and Pang confirms it, saying that he didn't want anyone to disturb Yiffen. Yiffen shows his gratitude for Pang's dedication. Pang asks if Yiffen encountered any difficulties and tells him to hurry up as they can't keep the young master and Miss Lu waiting for too long. Yiffen asks Pang why he never questioned what Yifen was doing inside for ten days. Pang responds that it's Yifen's own business and he doesn't feel the need to know. He assures Yifen that when he is ready, he will share the details. Yifen smiles as he sees such unconditional trust that he has never experienced before in his life. They both arrive at the residence of the first family in Fang City. As they enter the palace, the guards stop them and ask about their identities and how they dare to enter the Kafu family's premises. Pang introduces himself as the guardian of the Lu family and presents Li Fen as the Lu family's housekeeper, Zhu Fan. They tell the guards that Miss Lu is their guest. Yifen wonders when he became the housekeeper of the Lu family, but Pang explains that Kai Jiele recognized Zhao Fan as the household servant of the Lu family and Miss Lu introduced him to Jiele. Yifen realizes that as the demon magic emperor, he is now reduced to the role of a housekeeper for a small family. Observing the guards' unfriendly behavior, Yifen senses that something is amiss. The guards claim that this is the third person from the Lu family and accuse them of being con artists. Pang asks for clarification, but Yifen understands the situation and pulls Pang away. He recognizes that the guards' attitude reflects that of their master, and if they treat them this way, they will treat Miss Lu in the same manner. Yifen realizes that the Kafu family can no longer be trusted. He shares his understanding with Pang, who expresses disbelief at the treatment of the Lu family. They reach the hut where Miss Lu and the kid are staying and Pang says that the Kafu family don't even give the slightest hospitality. They open the door of the hut and see the young master inside. The kid hugs Pang and Pang apologizes to him, saying he is sorry that he was late. Yifen asks the kid where his sister is and the kid explains that his sister went to look for her fiancé and the head of the Kai family asked her to return and cancel the marriage contract. Yifen gets angry by this, asking what is this attitude and says that this is like accepting your own insults. He grabs the kid and tells him to take him to his sister. Miss Lu was at the house of her former fiancé Xiao Ting Ji. She sees Xiao romancing another girl and calls his name. Xiao sees her and asks her if she didn't understand what he said. He tells her that from now on, he has nothing to do with her. In his eyes, there is only Yu Fei. Yu Fei says that Xiao Ting hasn't liked Miss Lu for a long time as the person he likes now is her. They both laugh at Miss Lu and Miss Lu tells Xiao that she doesn't expect him to cancel the marriage and tells him to persuade his uncle. She tells him to look at the memories of their beautiful families in the past and asks him to help the Lu family. Xiao walks away saying that this problem has nothing to do with him. Miss Lu calls him again, saying that they both have grown together. She begs Xiao to help the Lu family. Just then, Yu Fei then walks up to Miss Lu and slaps her. She tells him to stay away from Xiao as he is hers. She then tells Xiao to stay away from Miss Lu and if she sees him doing something with Miss Lu then she won't let him go. Xiao tries to calm down Yu Fei, saying that she is the only one in his heart and that other women are shit in his eyes. Miss Lu wonders what she should do. She begs anyone to help and just then, Yifen comes and slaps both Xiao and Yu Fei. They both ask him who he is and Yifen asks them how dare they mess with his lady. Xiao Ting Ji sees that Yifen is on par with him in terms of strength, but he is surprised by Yifen's incredible speed. Despite being considered geniuses, neither he nor Yu Fei can react in time. Xiao wonders when Yifen reached such a level of skill. Meanwhile, Yifen thinks about his own reaction, realizing that despite experiencing the hardships of the world, he can't bear to witness a girl being bullied. He acknowledges that there is no logical reason for him to feel this emotional pain, suspecting that it must be connected to the memories of the body's previous owner. Yifen understands that he will have to spend a long time dealing with the Lu family and their troubles. Yifen firmly holds onto Miss Lu and begins to walk away. However, Yufi stops him and arrogantly questions if he thinks he can easily leave after striking them. She demands that Miss Lu meal and apologize her three times, promising to release her in return. Yufi also expects Yifen to kneel. Miss Lu says that Yufi's demands are too much, and Sho adds that Miss Lu will bring embarrassment to herself if she refuses to kneel. He warns her that without kneeling, she shouldn't expect to be allowed to leave and advises her to consider her brother's life. 
Pang remarks on the outrageous behavior of Xiao and Yu Fei. Miss Lu and the young master attempt to kneel, but in a sudden motion, Yifan dashes forward, forcefully slamming both Xiao and Yu Fei's heads onto the ground, forcing them to kneel. Yu Fei stubbornly declares that even if they begged, she would not let them go. Yifan then kicks Xiao in the face, causing him to knock back towards Yu Fei. The Lu family members are shocked by Yifan's actions. Yifan confronts Xiao and Yu Fei, questioning whether they truly deserve his kneeling. Just then, the head of the Kai family and Xiao's father arrive, questioning who dares to disturb the Kai family. Xiao is delighted to see his father and quickly blames Yifan for causing trouble. Yifan observes and senses that the head of the Kai family possesses the power of the eighth layer of the Fond Realm. The head of the Kai family is surprised by Yifan's ability to know his cultivation level with a single glance. He says that Yifan has a keen eye and asks for his identity. Yifan introduces himself as Yu Fan, the butler of the Lu family. The head of the Kai family thinks to himself that he had heard about the Lu family recruiting a new butler, but he did not expect the person to be so young and mysterious. He realizes that he cannot provoke an unknown entity, but his own power supports him, so he is no longer afraid. Yu Fei tells the head of the Kai family to punish Bifen and the others. The family head pats Yu Fei on the head, assuring her not to worry. He addresses Miss Lu, saying that he has shown kindness to her and her brother, but if they fail to give it back, they will only bring trouble upon themselves. Yifan comments on the aging of the Kai family head and tells him to speak his mind directly to him. Yifan advises the head of the Kai family to not pretend to be good to them while forgetting about the issue of the marriage contract. The head of the Kai family decides that since Yifan has caused a commotion, he will not show mercy and explains that he holds their lives in his hands. However, he declares that he will not take advantage of them but instead presents them with two options, to fight or die. Pang observes that the head possesses the power of the eighth layer, making it extremely difficult to defeat him. Miss Lu pleads with the head of the Kai family, saying that her younger brother Yunhai is still a child and innocent. Yifan grabs the opportunity and starts to attack the head of the Kai family. The head manages to dodge the attack and remarks that it is challenging for him to gather his Kai quickly. He tells Yifan that he is fortunate to survive the attack. Yifan says he never believes in luck and he only believes in strength. The head of the Kai family notices that Lifen's attack has injured his hand. Yifen then directs the head's attention to his son, Xiao, who is coughing up blood and clearly injured. Concerned, the head of the Kai family asks Yifen what he has done. Yifen calmly explains that he merely wants to convey to Elder Kai that he can take his son's life at any moment and warns him to be cautious. Lifen moves his finger, causing Xiao's injuries to worsen. The head of the Kai family tells Yifen to stop, saying he believes in Yifen's power. Yifen smiles and walks away, informing the head of the Kai family that if he disregards his warning, he will finish him off. He leaves with the Lu family, laughing confidently. Yu Fei questions the Kai family head's decision to let Lifen and the others go. The Kai family head responds by saying that he is feeling lazy and doesn't want to take any action today. However, he acknowledges that he cannot allow the tiger to return to the mountain. He emphasizes that if they do not deal with Yu Fen quickly, he will pose a threat to their family in the future. The Kai family head says that he will make a plan as soon as possible. Yu Fei, determined to take action, says that if the Kai family head is afraid to confront Yifen directly, the elders of her family are not afraid. She declares that because Yifen attacked her face, she will make him feel the consequence of offending one of the seven imperial families. Yifen and the others leave the Kai family's house, and Yifen asks Miss Lu if she is aware of the seven imperial families. Miss Lu wonders how Yifen came to know about them. Both Pang and Yunhai are confused as they are unaware of this information. Miss Lu explains that in the past, they were Grand Yunzhuang and had no connection to these families. However, now that they are in the limelight, if they were to encounter any of the seven imperial families, they should steer clear of them, even if they are just servants of those families. Pang realizes that Miss Lu remained calm while facing the Kai family, but he didn't expect her to be depressed like this. Miss Lu says that regardless of whether they are from the Lu or Kai family, no matter how powerful they may seem, they are merely secular families. In the Tianyu Empire during its foundation, the seven ministerial families received special consent from the imperial family and were granted the ability to rival the imperial family. These families possess territories and powers that surpass those of other families and opposing them is equivalent to opposing an entire empire. Pang questions if there is anyone who can match the power of the imperial family in this region and Miss Lu informs him that the seven imperial families are untouchable and no one can challenge them. Yifan asks if the Sun family is included, and Miss Lu asks how he knows about them. Yifan explains that he overheard Yu Fei shouting, let them feel the strength of the seven imperial families. Pang is surprised by this reveal. Miss Lu grabs Yifan's hand and suggests that they apologize to Miss Sun, 
But Yifen dismisses the idea, saying that it would be futile because going there would only lead to their deaths. Yun Hai addresses Yifen as brother and asks for his guidance on what they should do. Yifen is taken aback by this and questions why Yun Hai is calling him brother when he always refers to him as a slave dog. Yun Hai explains that calling someone brother is an honorable term because Yu Fan saved them and now he considers him to be like a brother. He even suggests that he wouldn't mind if Yifen became his brother in law and asks him to save them once again. Miss Lu scolds Yun Hai and tells him to stop talking nonsense. Yifen asks if there is still a member of the Seven Families present. Miss Lu informs him that there is one at the Kainlong Pavilion, known for being the number one treasure house. They possess great strength and wealth. Yifen pats Yun Hai and instructs everyone return for now, saying that tomorrow they will go to the Kainlong Pavilion. Miss Lu asks about their purpose at the pavilion and Yifen reveals that they plan to form an alliance. Everyone is surprised by this announcement. The next day, Yifen and the others arrive at the Kainlong Pavilion. Yifen is impressed by the sight of the strong guards stationed there. The guards stop them and ask about their purpose at the pavilion. Yifen informs them that Miss Yumzhuan of the Lu family wishes to meet the pavilion leader. The guards think that Yifen is the first madman they have encountered as he speaks to them without making eye contact. They state that they have never heard of the Lu family and see no reason to grant Yifen and the others entry. They tell them to leave immediately. Yifen says that the guards should consult their master, as they do not possess the authority to make such decisions. The guards grow angry at this and unleash their energy. Yifen questions whether this is how the Kuanlong Pavilion treats its guests and expresses his disappointment. Just then, a woman arrives and intervenes, instructing the guards to stop. The guards inform her that Yifen and the others have come to cause trouble. Yifen recognizes her as the same woman he met at the Jade Shop. The woman informs the guards that she overheard their conversation and reminds them to treat visitors as guests, urging them not to be rude. She then greets Yifen, acknowledging their previous encounter. Yifen seizes the opportunity and asks if she is from the Kaimon Pavilion. The woman introduces herself as Long Nui and explains that she is currently assigned to a task at the pavilion. She inquired about Yifen's purpose for coming there. Yifen introduces himself as Zhu Fan, the butler of the Lu family. He mentions that he has heard of the Kleinlong Pavilion's reputation as the number one treasure house in the Tianyu Empire and adds that he has accompanied Miss Lu to sell something. Nui expresses her interest in seeing what Yifen has to sell, and they all proceed inside the mansion. The guards are surprised to see that Yifen is friends with Nui. They dismiss it as a mere coincidence and confidently assert that Yifen will be expelled if he fails to meet the requirements and feasibility. They laugh, believing that they will teach Yifen a lesson. Nui wants to check the thing Yifen has. Yefen thinks to himself that Nui doesn't seem cunning, but she's very clever. He knows that the only thing that matters is the temptation to decide on the business negotiation strategy. Although Nui is an elite, she is nothing in front of Yefen. Yefen shows Nui a scroll and Nui is surprised to see this. Pang and Miss Lu see the scroll and talk among themselves that Zhu Fan drew it last night and wonder why Nui is looking at it so seriously. Nui tells Yefen to name his price. Yefen tells Nui that she is an expert and tells her to make a good offer. Nui offers a hundred thousand spiritual stones. Pang and Miss Lu are shocked to hear this. Yifen says only one hundred thousand and asks Nui if she is not giving the right price. Yifen says that he will not sell it with that offer. Nui is shocked to hear this. Yifen says that since Miss Long is not sincere, he will stop the business. Nui tries to negotiate, saying that this is just a sketch of a first-level formation array and one hundred thousand spiritual stones are enough. Yifen tells Nui to not lie to him and to give back the scroll to him. Nui says that she will pay 300,000. Yifen tells Nui that she still doesn't have sincerity. Nui thinks to herself that this picture is indeed a first-level formation, that there are many images in there that she has never seen before. She decides that even if she loses a lot of money, she has to get this formation. She knows that Yifen suspects him and doesn't want to let go. Yifen again tells Nui to give the scroll back. Nui tries to negotiate with Miss Lu, saying that this formation is worth 300,000 and within the TNU Empire, only they can buy this. She tells Miss Lu that they can't get this type of offer from anywhere. Nui tries to convince Miss Lu to do business with their pavilion. She tells her that they will be their VIP and in the future, the Kainlong Pavilion will always be open for them. Miss Lu thinks to herself that if they become VIPs, they can get support from them. She asks Zhu Fan if they should agree and Yifen tells her to shut up. He tells Nui that he is the butler of the Lu family and he is responsible for every affair of the Lu family. He again tells her to give back the scroll to him. Nui tells Yifen that his request doesn't make any sense to her. She assures Yifen about the Kainlong Pavilion and says that this first level formation at most is worth 300,000 spiritual stones. Yifen sees that Nui has threatened them. Yifen tells Nui that she didn't get it and asks Nui if the Kainlong Pavilion master is there. 
Novi is shocked to hear Yifen say that she didn't get it and tells Yifen that he has good eyes but don't be too arrogant. Yifen tells Nui that he wants to meet the master of the Kainlong Pavilion. Nui has to agree and tells Yifen to wait here. Miss Lu asks Yifen if they offended the Kainlong Pavilion. After a while, the Kainlong Pavilion master, Shen Yanlong Ju, walks out and Pang and others recognize him. Yifen sees that the master is strong and his cultivation level is much higher than the head of the Kai family. The difference is so large that he can't even assess his cultivation level. Miss Lu greets Master Ju and Master Ju asks Yifen if he is the new butler of the Lu family. Yifen says that and Master Ju sits down saying that as long as he is not old, anyone can be a butler. He says that he has heard that Yifen doubts the ability of Long Nui and asks if it is true. Yifen says it is and Master Ju says that although Long Nui has a short career, she has a unique view. But since Yifen still doubts her, he will look at it. Yifen shows the scroll to Master Ju who sees it and is surprised. Nui again tries to say that this is only worth 300,000 spiritual stones. Master Ju and Yifen share a look and Master Ju says that he didn't expect that Lu family have something like this. He offers Yifen 1.8 million spiritual stones. Pang and others are surprised to hear this. Nui tries to interject but Master Ju stops her. Yifen says that it is too low. Pang is surprised to see how Yifen could say that. Master Ju tells Yifen that he can only offer him 1.8 million spiritual stones. Miss Lu says that they will sell it to Master Ju and Master Ju is happy to hear this. Yifen stops and says that if Master Ju is not able to pay a higher price then he will cancel this transaction. Master Ju warns Yifen, releasing his energy that pushes back Yifen, Pang, and Miss Lu. Yifen tells Master Ju that if he does this, he will damage the name of the Kainlong Pavilion. Master Ju asks Yifen if he is not scared. Yifen tells Master Ju that the Kainlong Pavilion is a business family in the Empire, and if he behaves badly, then it will damage the honor of the family. He says that he is just a bad boy, but he bets that Master Ju doesn't want to damage the reputation of his family. He asks Master Ju if he is right, and Master Ju laughs, calling Leifen a good boy. Pang, Miss Lu, and Nui are surprised to see this. Master Ju says that if the Lu family is supported by a person like Yifen, then they don't need to worry about the rise of the Lu family. He says that he knows Yifen hasn't come to the Kailong Pavilion just to sell this array formation and asks him what his condition is. Yifen tells Master Ju that the price of this formation is 10 million and Master Ju can pay a million today and pay the rest later. He tells Master Ju that they currently owe them. Master Ju accepts the deal and tells Yifen that until the debt is paid, the Kainlong Pavilion will help him as much as possible. Master Ju tells Nui to pay Yifen 1 million and he leaves. Nui agrees and pays them. Yifen and others leave and Nui asks Master Ju how they could buy the scroll for 10 million spiritual stones. She says that she has never seen that kind of formation before. Master Ju shows her the scroll and tells her to look at it carefully. Nui sees and realizes that this is the sketch of ancient array formation. Master Ju tells her that the method of forming ancient formations has long been lost, but they can see from ancient books and there is no doubt this is an ancient formation. He says that this invaluable treasure can't be compared to 10 million spiritual stones. Nui says that she didn't expect this sketch to be so valuable. Master Ju tells Nui to tell Aji to find four or five strong people to protect the Lu family as they offended the Sun family yesterday. Nui asks why they should protect them and Master Ju tells her that this was their intention. This is the way they will pay their debt to them. Yifen is meditating in his inn and suddenly Pang comes and tells Yifen that they are surrounded by the Sun family. Yifen says that the person he was waiting for has finally come. Pang asks him why he is so calm and Yifen asks him why he was waiting for them. He tells Pang to call Miss Lu and the young master. Pang says that because Yifen is so talented, it also gives him courage. Outside the inn, Yufi and other Sun family are there demanding the Lu family to get out. Just then, the Lu family walks out Miss Lu asks what the problem is and why Yufi brought so many people to their residence. Yufi says that she didn't forget what they all did to her at the Kai residence and says that today they will not let the Lu family go from here. They will destroy all of them. Miss Lu looks at Ju Fan and thinks to herself that as long as he is not afraid, then everything is okay. Miss Lu addresses Yu Fei, saying that her family has lived in Linchen for hundreds of years, and it is not easy for them to destroy them. She tells Yu Fei to be very careful with her words. Just then, Yu Fei gets angry and goes for an attack, saying that a chicken will never be a phoenix. Pang comes forward trying to protect Miss Lu, but Yu Fei's cousin stops Yu Fei from attacking. He talks with Miss Lu, saying to forgive his cousin for being rude and saying that they are only here to look for the butler of the Lu family. He tells Miss Lu that this will not involve her and as long as they hand over the butler, they promise not to hurt anyone. Yufi screams at his cousin saying that this was not the deal and why they are destroying the Lu family. 
The cousin shuts you Faye and says that if Miss Lou wants, this could be a great opportunity for Miss Lou to recreate a good future. Miss Lou says that looking for a problem with their butler means looking for a problem with their family and Zhu Fan is part of the Lou family and he has something to do with her. The cousin tells Miss Lou that he suggests her to not fight and if they know his identity, they will not dare to fight him. The cousin says that his name is Zixia Yuquan and he is the disciple of Yuming Valley. Miss Lu is shocked to hear this as she realizes that Yuquan is a member of the seven families of the empire. Yufei asks Miss Lu if she is afraid now. Miss Lu thinks to herself that the Sun family had a relationship with the seven families of the empire and that was the reason why the head of the Kai family was so respectful to Yufei. She grabs Yufan who confidently steps out, introducing himself as Yufan, the butler of the Lu family, and asks Yuquan how he wants to finish this and suggests a one-on-one. -on -one. Yuquan says that as her cousin told him, Zhou Fan is very arrogant, and if he loses to someone like Zhou Fan, this will only bring shame to Yuning Valley. He goes for an attack and Yifan manages to dodge it with just a scratch on him. Yuquan is surprised that Yifan could dodge it. Yifan sees that Yuquan's key pressure is six times heavier and realizes that he is a devil mock. Miss Lu asks Yifan if he is alright and Yifan is interested in Yuquan. Yuquan thinks to himself why is Yifan not afraid but looks like he is enjoying it? He wonders who Zhou Fan is. Just then, Yifan goes for an attack and the speed of Yifan completely surprises Yuquan. Yuquan tries to block it and does as he is pushed back. Yufei warns Yuquan about Yifan, saying that he also injured the Kai family head. Yuquan looks at his injured hand and realizes that he's in trouble as he didn't expect anyone to hurt him. He wonders if Zhou Fan is a demon cultivator. Demon cultivators always pursue power in any way to be the strongest and practice with strong discipline and strict rules. Being against them is no different from being against a group of madmen. Yuquan realizes that he needs to finish this quickly. He charges an attack rush towards Yifen. He attacks Yifen's heart and tells him that his key flow has been sealed and even if he has another skill, he can't use it. Miss Lu and Pang worry about Yifen as Yufi cheers for Yuquan to hurt him. Yuquan tries to go for a finishing blow but Yifen goes for his move Blood Shadow Palm and attacks Yuquan, launching him above and sending him flying. He asks Yifen how he could use a martial arts skill when his Kai flow was sealed by him. Yunhai cheers for Yifen, saying that he is amazing, but just then, Yifen falls to the ground. Miss Lu and others wonder what happened, and Yuquan explains that because Yifen was forced to use a martial arts skill, when his Kai flow was sealed, he will die soon. Yuquan says that he and Yifen had the same power, so he was about to use his full power, but not seeing Yifen's condition. Even though he is injured, he can still hurt Yifen with one hand. Miss Lu tries to protect Yifen by blocking Yuquan, but Yuquan easily moves past her. Pang also tries to block, but Yuquan moves him away. Yuquan goes for a finishing blow against Yifen, but suddenly hears someone's voice telling him to stop. Someone grabs Yuquan before he can deliver the finishing blow. Yuquan and Yufei recognize the person as Long Ji from the Kaimlong Pavilion. Long Ji tells Yuquan that he has herded people anywhere and asks if it is still not enough. Yuquan tells Long Ji that this is none of his business and tells him not to interfere. Long Ji tells Yuquan that he was ordered by Uncle Ju to protect the safety of the Lu family. He tells Yuquan that if he wants to hurt them, then he will have to pass through him. Yuquan tells Long Ji that he and Long Ji have the same power and asks if he can protect Yuifen. Long Ji tells Yuquan that he is injured and he can't beat him with those wounds. Long Ji tells Yuquan that if he and Yuquan battle, there will be a big battle and asks him if he can bear the consequences. Yuquan thinks to himself that the Yuming Valley and Kailong Pavilion have problems with each other and sooner or later there will be warfare, but not now. Yuquan knows that he can't destroy the family plans. He tells Long Ji that he understands and was about to back away, but just then, Yifen comes and stabs him through his chest. He asks Yuquan if his master didn't tell him how the devil cultivators fight. If he hesitates, then he will die. Yuquan thinks to himself that Yifen was clearly dying and wonders where he got his power. He sees that he has become faster than before and realizes that he fell into his trap. Not only Yuquan, but also Long Ji. Yuquan tries to ask for help, but Yifen hurts him. Yufi cries and faints from seeing this and Long Ji is left shocked. Yifen asks Long Ji if he was sent by Ju to protect them and tells him thanks for his help. He tells Long Ji to convey his message to Master Ji that he doesn't have to send anyone else to protect them. At night, in a Kailong pavilion, Master Ju informs Long Ji and Long Nui that Yifen has caused trouble and disrupted their family's plans. Long Nui is confused and asks Master Ji about the connection between Zhao Fan's actions and the Kailong pavilion. Master Ju reveals that Long Ji was present during the incident and everyone witnessed Yifen hurting Yuquan in front of him. Master Ju asks who will be held responsible for this and Nui says it would be the Lu family. 
However, Long Ji corrects her, saying that nobody would believe that someone from a small family would dare to hurt a disciple of the seventh family of the empire. Nui understands this, and Long Ji explains that people from the Yuming Valley and the Sun family will not believe what happened and will blame the Kainlong Pavilion. Nui says that this is unfortunate for them and questions why they should be held accountable for the actions of the Lu family. Master Ju replies that this is not unfortunate, as he believes it was under the plan of Yifen. According to Long Ji, Yifen was nearly out of breath, and even if Yu Guan had attempted to attack him, he would not have been able to move his body. However, after Long Ji intervened to block Yu Guan's attack, Yifen grabbed the opportunity to recover and counterattack. Master Ju recognizes that Lifen's strength has significantly increased, and this was part of his plan. Long Nui says that Lifen planned this to defeat Yu Guan, but Master Ju corrects her, saying that Yifen did not plan it just for Yu Guan, but for the Kainlong Pavilion and the Yuming Valley. When the two families engage in conflict, Lifen can persuade the Lu family to escape. Long Nu questions if Yifen is not afraid of offending the two major families and Master Ju says that Yifen had considered this. When Yifen came to the Kainlong Pavilion to sell the Array Formation Scroll, he already knew how much Master Ju valued their family's honor. If the Kainlong Pavilion had done nothing or ignored the Lu family, it would have damaged their honor. Hence, the Kainlong Pavilion will ensure the safety of the Lu family until the end. Master Ju says that Yifen is the most dangerous person he has ever encountered. Back at the inn, Yifen tells the others to leave him alone as he meditates and focuses on increasing his power. He reflects on his own weakness, realizing that he had believed he could defeat Yu Quan effortlessly by using all his strength, but in reality he was unable to win and nearly lost his life. He acknowledges that he is too weak and recognizes that he is caught up in the conflict between the seven families, with the looming threat of the seven families as his enemy. With his current power, he is unable to protect himself and the Lu family. He resolves to become stronger quickly, using the power of the Bloody Baby. At the Kai family house, Yifen almost hurts Xiao using the Bloody Baby. He decides to not hurt Xiao first, as he wants him to watch the Kai family be destroyed. The guard outside the Kai house wonders where all the other guards went. Just then, he feels the presence of Bloody Baby. He looks behind him but sees nothing. He feels safe, but just then, the Bloody Baby hurts him. He had herded 50 people in the Kai residence and Yifen feels really proud of his bloody baby as he can hurt a practitioner in a snap. Yifen's wounds haven't recovered yet after fighting with Yu Guan, and he needs blood and Kai to heal himself, so he uses the bloody baby for it and also subdues the Kai family. Just then, Yifen feels the key pressure of a master devil cultivator and realizes that there is a master at the Kai house. He sees all the guards gathered at a place and checks the buildings. He sees that in a room, the head of the Kai family is talking with Elder Jane and Sun Jiaxu. The Kai head asks Elder Jane if there is any problem and Elder Jane tells the Kai family head that today his disciple Yu Quan was herded by Quinlong's pavilion. The Kai family says that it was the Lu family who herded him and the Elder Jane says that the Lu family wouldn't dare to do it. He says that his Yuming Valley and Quinlong's pavilion have long been hostile to each other, but there were no parties who dared to start first and break the balance of the seven families of the empire. Elder Jane says that this time the Quanlong Pavilion herded his Yuming Valley disciple within the Lu family premise. Yifen hears this and thinks that this is happening just as he thought the seven families of the Empire have dominated for decades and it never occurred to them that there are people who dare to oppose their dignity and honor. Because of their arrogance, they would rather believe that this is a conspiracy instead of believing the facts in front of them and this applies to Quanlong Pavilion. The Kai family head asks Elder Jane what his purpose is for coming here and Elder Jane tells the Kai family head that he wants him to help him to watch what the Kainlong Pavilion is going to do. He says that if he shows himself instead, there is going to be a big war. The Kai family head hesitates, saying that it is Kainlong Pavilion and he can't offend them. He thinks to himself why should he be involved in the dispute between the seven families. The Elder Jane agrees that the Kai family can't offend the Kainlong Pavilion and tells the Kai family head to deal with the Lu family and see the reaction of the Kainlong Pavilion. The head of the Kai family is shocked to hear this. He knows that the Lu family is supported by the Kainlong Pavilion, and if he goes to cause trouble with the Lu family, it would be the same as offending the Kainlong Pavilion. He sees Sun Janju and thinks that it was his granddaughter who is close to the Yuming Valley, so why doesn't he go to look for trouble with the Lu family? Because it was his daughter that caused what happened today. He tells Elder Jin that Zhu Fan is the person he hates the most right now and a few days ago, he used a skill that made his child vomit blood for several days and even now he hasn't recovered yet. He says that if he goes and provokes him again then he is afraid that Zhu Fan will hurt his son. Yefen hears this and thinks that he just wanted to teach a lesson to the Kai family, he injected Bloody Baby into Xiao's body and he even used Bloody Baby today to torture him. 
Magfin thinks that he didn't expect the head of the Kai family to use such a lame excuse to avoid this order. Elder Jane tells the Kai family head to not make excuses. The Kai family head says that the head of the Sun family is wise and competent and if Elder Jane leaves this assignment to him then he will surely fulfill it. Sun Janju asks Kai Rong what he meant but Elder Jane stops their fight and tells them that they are useless and he doesn't need them anymore as he will ask others for help. Elder Jane asks Kai Rong if he has prepared the spiritual martial arts book. Kai Rong says that he did and gives it to Elder Jane saying that this is the ancestral spiritual martial arts. Elder Jane accepts this and gives Kai Rong a medium level flame finger spiritual martial art and says that this is better than the low level spiritual martial arts Kai Rong uses. Biffin sees this exchange and wonders what Elder Jane wants from it. Sun Janju asks Elder Jane who he will choose to deal with the Lu family. Elder Jane says that the person is one of the members of the Yuming Valley. Sun Janju asks if the Yuming Valley is going to attack directly and Elder Jane says that the person is like a chess piece they have arranged for a long time. He says that the person is on the Mountain of the Black Wind. Yiffen hears this, but just then, Elder Jane senses the presence of someone and asks who is there. He blasts the window and Bloody Baby manages to dodge it. Elder Jane chases after the Bloody Baby and Yiffen sees that Elder Jane is very fast. Others also see this and wonder what happened. Just then, Yiffen makes a guard explode and uses this as a distraction to escape from Elder Jane. Chiron asks what that creature was and Elder Jane says he doesn't know and says that it must be a skill of a devil cultivator. Bloody Baby returns to Yifen and Yifen is glad that the Bloody Baby was not destroyed by Elder Jane. He didn't expect that there would be such a strong man at the Kai residence. Since Bloody Baby has Yifen's heart, if the Bloody Baby is destroyed he will die as well. Yifen realizes that he needs to increase his strength. He sees that for now, the state between the Yuming Valley and Kleinlong Pavilion is stable, but someone from the Mountain of the Black Wind will come soon and the Lu family will be in danger. Just then, all the shy and power of the people Bloody Baby herded comes to Yifen, and he knows that he can increase his strength easily, as in less than ten days he has broken through his key collection and his strength and speed have been doubled. It is now morning and Yifen exits the inn and sees Miss Lu fall over when he opens the door. He asks her what she is doing in front of his room. Yifen thinks to himself that he was careless, and if it was an enemy, then he would have died. Miss Lu tells Yifen that she was afraid his wounds might get worse, so she was guarding the door and waiting for him outside. Miss Lu leaves, saying that Yifen looks fine. Yifen asks her if she was waiting here for the whole night, but Miss Lu runs away, blushing. Pang comes and says that he is glad Yifen is fine. He says that Yifen's wounds were so bad, he thought he was going to die. He tells Yifen that Miss Lu guarded him the whole night, afraid that something might happen to him. He asks Yifen where Miss Pang is and Yifen tells him that she is gone. Yifen smiles but suddenly gets a feeling in his heart. He wonders how he could, the demon's magic emperor, could be moved by such a woman's treatment. His heart is beating faster and he realizes that this must be Zhou Fan's heart magic. Pang wonders what is wrong with Yifen. Yifen tells Pang to follow him to Kailong's pavilion. Pang asks what about Miss Lu and young master and Yifen tells Pang not to worry as after yesterday's incident. No one will dare to touch them right now. Pang says that he trusts Yifen and says that in the past, Zhao Fan could only sweep the courtyard but now he has become a talented person. They both arrive at the Kuenlong's pavilion and the guards treat them nicely. Yifen asks them if they didn't have any respect for them a few days ago and the guards tell Yifen that they didn't know at that time that Yifen was a great customer and as a VIP guest, they couldn't stop Yifen. Yifen calls the guards useless trash for looking down on people. Yifen enters the pavilion and sees Long Nui. Long Nui ignores them and walks away. Pang asks Yifen if they offended her. Yifen calls Miss Nui and asks her if the Kuenlong's pavilion is not friendly to their guests and Long Nui tells him that he is not a guest here. Yifen calls Long Nui an innocent girl and Long Nui tells Yifen to watch who he is talking to. Yifen asks Nui how they can survive in this world if they are so easily angered while discussing business or taking something into account. He says that Long Ji is more mature than her. Yifen says that Long Ji knew that he was being planned by him, so he left without saying much and Yifen says that Long Ji is very smart and fast in taking action. He says that the ability to think fast and acknowledge defeat is power too. Affection and emotions don't help anyone and the benefit is above all. He tells Long Nui to forget about their personal problems and let us talk business now. Long Nui agrees. Just then, Master Zhu comes and asks Zhu Fan to allow him to talk to him. Long Ji is also there and he is shocked to see Yifen completely fine as he was badly injured yesterday but now has no wound on him at all. He wonders if Yifen healed overnight. Yifen asks Master Ju to give the young people the opportunity to do business and Master Ju says that he wants to do business with Yifen 
as how could he hand over a business that could harm the honor of the kind Long Pavilion to the young people? He says that since Yifen has come here, he must have some request that he wants to ask him and Master Ju tells Yifen that he knows what he is planning. He tells Yifen that he is very smart in making plans, but he is not smarter than Master Ju. Yifen knows that his plan is predicted by Master Ju and he says that his assessment of him is too high as he can't be compared to him. Master Ju gets angry and tells Yifen to stop the nonsense and asks him what he wants today. Yifen says that he wants to find a new residence for the Lu family and asks Master Ju to recommend it to them. Master Ju asks Yifen why he should help them and Yifen says that Kai Long Pavilion owes them and it is easier for Kai Long Pavilion to monitor them. Master Ju is shocked to hear this as he thinks that Yifen can read what people are thinking. Since yesterday, Kyuan Long Pavilion didn't do anything and Master Ju doesn't know when they are going to deal with Yuan Valley and since the Lu family have no residence, if they aren't careful, the Lu family can cause a big war between the two families. So they needed to monitor the Lu family, however, Yifen suddenly came and said this. Master Ju wonders what Yifen is thinking. Master Ju has lived for almost a hundred years, but he is being controlled by Yifen in the palm of his hand. Master Ju is not comfortable at all. Yifen says he has something for them. Long Nui asks Yifen what information he has and if it is beneficial to the Kainlong Pavilion. Yifen says that he knows the influence of Kainlong Pavilion throughout the plains of the Empire, but the cat has a way of the cat and the rats have a way of rats. He says that he has information that they don't. Master Ju says that he wants to hear it first. Yifen says that the Yuman Valley will soon attack the Kainlong Pavilion and everyone is shocked to hear this. Long Ji says that it is impossible as he always keeps an eye on their actions and nothing passes from his information. Long Nui tells Long Ji to not listen to Yifen as he might be fooling them. She asks Yifen what evidence he has and Yifen says that he has no evidence but he knows the appearance of this very old person that Kai Rong and others call him Elder Jane. Master Ju gets angry when he hears this name and he releases a deadly aura that pushes back Yifen. Yifen sees that Master Ju's hurting intent is very strong and asks him what kind of relationship he has with Elder Jane. Long Ji says that he is his enemy as he was the one who took Mr. Ju's right eye. Yifen didn't expect Master Ju to have this deep hatred towards Elder Jane and apologized to Master Ju for offending him. Master Ju says that it is all right and says that since Yifen has told and described Elder Jane, he trusts him and tells him that there is a residence that is a hundred meters away from here that the Lu family can occupy. Yifen thanks Master Ju and leaves. Master Ju asks Yifen where he has seen Elder Jane and Yifen replies in the Kai family residence but now he can be in the Sun family residence. Master Ju hears this and tells Long Ji to message the family and instruct them to send more elders as he doesn't want Jane Fan to leave this city alive. Master Ju wants to make Elder Jane regret taking his right eye. The Lu family arrived at their new residence and they are excited to be here. Yifen asks Pang what he thinks of becoming the leader of the guards like them. Pang says that every guard here is much better than him and being one of them is good enough. Yifen tells Pang to not worry as the day that he will become their leader will come. Pang is happy to hear this, but Long Nu also hears this. She says that Yifen is not only fooling others, but also fooling people around him. She says that the Lu family's butler is a big liar as with Pang's qualification, he can only reach the sixth layer. She tells Pang that he can't be compared to their guards. She says that a small family like them shouldn't dream of becoming a big family. Yifen tells Long Nu that there is a saying, do not bully the weak just because you can. He tells Long Nu to not be outrageous. Long Nui tells Yifen that the Lu family are just lying to themselves and dreaming in the daytime just to entertain themselves. She says that a big and strong family can only be built from hundreds of generations and tells Yifen that using his little intelligence at Kainlong Pavilion will not make him become great. She tells Yifen that he is just a frog in the well and he doesn't know how big the world is. Long Ji tells Long Nui that she is too much. Yifen asks Long Nui for permission to use Ling Shi. He jumps and hops onto the rooftop of the residence. Long Nui tells Yifen that this is not his home and asks him if he has manners. She tells him to come down quickly. Yifen says that he will use a level 3 defensive formation, the Panlong formation. Long Nui and Long Ji are surprised to hear this as only Master Ju can set up this formation. Yifen jumps up into the sky and creates a bunch of pebbles that he throws on the ground. Yifen comes back to the ground and Long Nui asks him what he is doing. Yifen asks if he has to answer and activates the formation. From the pebbles, energy comes out and forms a golden dragon. Elder Jane senses this golden dragon and shakes to his core, wondering who activates this array. Master Ju also sees this and says that this is his Panlong formation array, but realizes that his one is not as strong as this. Shaozai also sees this golden dragon from the mountains and wonders what happened in the city. He wonders if the plan will be executed earlier than scheduled. He knows that Elder Jane is not reckless and wonders what is going on. 
Yefen forms the dragon into a large barrier that covers the residence. Long Nui asks Zhao Fan what he has done and Yifen ignores her. Long Nui tells him to not ignore her and Yifen tells Miss Luo that he just finished setting up the Panlong Formation Array and says that this is only a level 3 formation and he is afraid that this will not be able to protect Miss Lu completely. He says that he advises increasing it to level 5, the Jushin Panlong Array, but says that it requires a lot of Lingxi. Long Nui and Long Ji are shocked to hear this as only a few people can make level 5 formation arrays in the Tianyu Empire and even in the seven families of the Empire, there is no such talent yet Yifen is confidently saying that he can make the level 5 formation array. He wonders if Yifen can really do so. Miss Lu tells Yifen that it's okay, but since Zhou Fan used so many Lingxi without her permission then he needs to be punished, but because he used it for them, she will forgive him this time. They all leave leaving Long Nui and Long Ji speechless. Long Nui realizes that Yefen is a level 5 formation master. She wonders how a small family could have such a talented person. Just then, Master Ju comes and asks who set up this array. Long Ji tells him that it was the butler of the Lu family, Zhou Fan. Master Ju is shocked to hear this and says that no one knows how to set up this formation array, and it took him years to learn it. He wonders how Yefen could set up a level 3 formation when he is so young. He tells Long Ji and Long Nui to call Yefen as he wants to see and talk to him. After a while, Yifen comes and sits down in front of Master Ju. Master Ju calls Zhou Fan brother and Long Ji thinks to himself that Master Ju only calls brother to a person he respects. Yifen sits down and asks what brother Ju wants. Long Nu calls Yifen shameless. Master Ju laughs and says that since Zhou Fan called him brother, he doesn't mind it and will accept it. He says that Zhou Fan can set up a level 5 formation array and asks him that with such ability, why is he still serving the Lu family and asks him if he would join them in the Kainlong Pavilion. Master Zhu promises Yifen that he will get better treatment and he will also be a great elder. He says that even if the head of the Kainlong Pavilion sees Yifen, he will be polite. Long Ji and Long Nui are shocked to hear this as the great elder is in the highest position in Kainlong Pavilion and Yifen is still young with no experience. They don't want to accept him as a great elder. Yefen thinks to himself that this is what he predicted when he started the fight with the Sun family in Yuming Valley. With the talent to set up a fifth level array formation in this empire, everyone wants to have it and even if Yefen meets the emperor, he would treat him with respect. Master Ju asks Yefen what he thinks and Yefen says that he has some conditions. Master Ju says that it doesn't matter as long as Kanlong Pavilion can do it, Yefen can mention anything. Yefen says that he wants Long Nui to bring him tea, water, wash his feet, and warm his bed. Long Nui tells Yifen in his dreams. Master Ju tells Long Nui to calm down. Yifen laughs and says that he was just hurting. He says that he has missed Lu and home in a home and he doesn't need anything else. He says that he just wants his brothers and sisters in the Lu family to live in peace. Master Ju and others are surprised to hear this as the condition is not for himself but for the Lu family. Master Ju says that he promises Yifen that during his stay in Kainlong Pavilion, the Lu family will remain safe. He says that they will make sure that all generations of the Lu family will be safe. Master Ju tells Yifen that from now on, he will be Kainlong Pavilion's great elder and Master Ju will tell the family about him three days later when he will take him to the family headquarters. Yifen tells Master Ju to wait as he didn't promise to become the great elder. Master Ju asks Yifen if he is rejecting it and asks Zhao Fan if he is fooling him. Yefen says that if Master Ju invited him half an hour ago, he would have agreed without hesitation, with the same condition he said earlier. Master Ju asks Yefen what happened to make him change his mind. Yefen asks Long Nyu if she remembers what she said before. Yefen says that in the next ten years he will make the Lu family prevail over the seven families of the empire. He drinks the tea and leaves in a storm. Master Ju asks Long Nyu what she said to him. Long Ji says that he will tell him everything. After Long Ji explained to Master Ju what happened, he tells Long Nui to never look down or break someone's self-respect. He says that since Long Nui insulted the Lu family, no wonder Yifen refused and is angry with her. Long Ji says that what Yifen said before leaving, he can't achieve it. Master Ju says that the Lu family has Zhu Fan who is a genius fifth level, and even if they are a part of the seven families of the empire in the future, they will be the best families among secular families or leaders of an alliance. Master Ju says that they almost invited him to be a great elder.